I'm Kate Miller and I've been asked to say a little bit about the work I put into the long beds and one of the questions was where do you like to work? Where's your favourite place to work? And actually this is my favourite place to work but it's not the place I work as a writer. It's the allotment and it's a great boon to a Londoner to have an allotment. Mine is particularly wonderfully sighted on the slopes up to Dulwich Woods, looking out across, well, looking out across central London. Perhaps you can see the skyline with the London Eye and to, over to the right, St Paul's Cathedral. And in fact, over to the left, Battersea Power Station and Wembley. I mean, it's a huge view. I come up here to work with my hands and to get fresh air and to make produce. I grow mostly fruit. This year it's gone completely to seed because of coronavirus keeping me out of London for the entire period. Um, I've sneaked back today to make this video. And uh, I don't write up here, as I've already said, but I do meet some of the creatures that appear in my poems who share this earth with me. I tend to come here in the morning or a little before lunch when the sun is full on the site and I tend then to work at my desk at home in the afternoons. The process of writing for me is a bit like the process of growing a tree rather than a, an annual because it's very slow and uh, I've been disappointed this year in the fact that the drought has lost us all our fruit crop or very nearly all of it. Well I guess it's a bit like that with writing some years nothing much nothing much sets. This has been a good year quite a lot of poems have been published in magazines a great many and several uh, recordings both podcasts and um, video collaborations have been made. So here I am at home in my study. I'm very lucky to have a room of my own. Well, I worked for it. Uh, the long beds contains a section about my grandmother's life, the, the life I perceived her to live when I knew her in her 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. But also after her death, I found out a great deal more about her writing, which although it wasn't published, some of it was broadcast because she had grown up in India and had things to say about India after partition, uh, which she broadcast on Women's Hour and um, other BBC programmes. And she went on writing uh, throughout her retirement until her blindness finally stopped her completely. Uh, so this, I thought I'd read a poem from the book about, about getting to know that side of her. Woman of Letters. On the blotter, splotched an envelope lies slit by sun or with the old brass paper knife, an interruption in the gloom. Where's the letter? And from whom? I vow to read her secret life. We know the correspondence she posts out to family, her missives to the press, much less about the yellow papers tied with binding tape and locked up in the chest, rifling for a treasury tag. I come across a scarlet sylvine book with carbon leaves, page after tattooed page. The log, eventually I learn, she keeps with dates of publishers' polite rejection slips. The lid is off a heavy jar of spider leggy ink. I wait to see her free those spiders when she writes her wiry black left-handed script. They run amok across the sheets. And when I was tidying up my study to show it to you, I found that one of my precious blue collection, it's not blue glass, no, it's glass with blue ink in it. I mean, Granny used black ink, but I do have 
quite a lot of ink in this room though I rarely nowadays write with my fountain pen I always have one about um, I tend to write with a pencil usually rather a scruffy one and quite early on I commit a lot of notes to um, a document which I can print out if I want to that may run for two pages sometimes longer and then over the period of about six seven years I cut it down to what I want it to be which very often is four verses um, I call them verses because they look a bit like verses uh, but they rarely rhyme my very first poem in 2002 which was sprung for me by the um, genius of Greta Stoddart, who became my tutor that year, um, was about my grandmother. It's in the book, it's called Earliest Poem in which Muriel figures. And uh, it was a revelation. It just popped out in a class. Um, so that's 18 years ago. I put this book together in 2017, 2018 at a period a difficult time in my life when I needed to take charge of to some extent take charge of somebody else's life um, gradually and tactfully and uh, that required a lot of traveling and setting up another home um, which I now share with family members out of London uh, and that you know that's always several years work so uh, this book has had the benefit of two years of thinking about it after it was uh, essentially created it was a bit like bringing up a baby <laughs> and sending it off to nursery uh, <laughs> I think it will become obvious if you read the long beds that bed is a place where I spend quite a lot of time. Well, don't we all? Uh, but I do read in bed and I do write in bed. I write up. I write up the events of my life sitting up in bed. First thing in the morning, sometimes in the middle of the night, um, and often last thing at night. And I'll go to bed in the afternoon to read often. Uh, in fact, that's where. If I'm not actually able to write, you'll probably find me. And if not in bed, well, then in a hammock. I absolutely adore to be, what's the word, recumbent. I love to be recumbent above the ground, not far above the ground. I shouldn't like to be in a tree. Um, much though I love trees, I should like to be in the shadow of a tree. And we do have marvellous trees, both here in London, of cypresses, Scots pine, birches, marvellous birches and a lot of apple trees and then in the country we just have the most magnificent chestnut trees so to be in an upstairs room in the country looking out at horse chestnut candles which is what I had in lockdown for hmm, 10 weeks was actually just the most luxurious kind of holiday from from the world but anyway reading is also um, it's for me a departure, a departure from the world. I, I can't say I, I can't say I want to even find the world in my reading. So the book, um, the two books I've chosen to recommend, if you like, to you are Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. I've tried to find words to describe the shift that occurs in time and place and affection and closeness or intimacy it keeps occurring but I can't describe it so that's why it blew me away because I can't say what it is I can't put my finger on it I would I would encourage you to read it if you haven't uh, the other book I'd like to um, claim has affected me is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. Uh, it's kind of an Edwardian answer to The Great Gatsby, but by a very level-headed writer. 
and I, I, I think it's, I think it's the tongue-in-cheekness with. She's not a Dorothy Parker type at all, Edith Wharton. She's a very observant writer, and she's looking at a. She's created a character who she may well have known. Um, she's looking at that character's um, model over whether to be, retain her independence and be very poor, or to get married. <laughs> it's it's a very good study. And it's also a great depiction of, of New York in the, um, in the early 20th century, which is a period that I'm anyway interested in. So I would recommend that. I'd also ha heartily recommend, uh, I may be speaking mostly to poets here, but I would heartily recommend um, signing up for the Paris Review's daily poem. I, it's just thrilling. Uh, every day something has been chosen and in lockdown they've been incredibly apposite really really good so that's another um that's that's an extra i'd like to say and also uh since the death of ivan boland i've been uh, keen to read her her book from a couple of years ago a journey a journey with two maps um becoming a woman poet which has so much um well, we should be grateful to all the women poets of um, of her generation now in their now in their seventies who've managed alongside their careers they've managed to be mothers and daughters and wives sometimes or partners anyway um, and teachers great women great women.